Experimental setup for atomic probe tomography begins with the sample. It must be a very sharp tip and cryogenically cooled to control the emission. Then there is an electrode, a detector, and a source of power to the sample. Tip is placed in an in an ultra-high vacuum chamber so electrons have an unimpeded path to the detector. A pulse of extremely high voltage, around 3 to 15 kilovolts, is then applied to the sample so the ions feel a very strong electric field at the tip. This causes field evaporation, meaning that the electric field is so strong enough to overcome the energy needed to remove an atom from the sample. The electric field has to be precisely calculated so only one atom leaves a sample at a time. Once the atom evaporates, it follows along the electric beam path and collides with a 2D detector. Because voltage is a pulse, the detector can properly measure how long it took for the sample to get to the detector. This time depends on the mass of the atom, which gives us the identity of the atom. Location of where the atom collides with the 2D detector determines spatial location of the atom in the sample. The atom probe will create a 3D image of the sample providing spatial coordinates of the atoms and atom type. Sample preparation varies depending on the thickness of the specimen that is being examined. Materials must be within a specific range of sizes in order to have appropriate atom analysis. If the sample is too large, the probe will not be able to accurately analyze and identify the sample. Bulk materials and dopant profile-based materials go through a sharpening process. The materials are sharpened to a point that is 500 nanometers or less in diameter at the bottom of the sample. First, the material is filled into small wells and a probe is attached to each well to extract the sample. The samples are then mounted to a microtip sheet. Finally, the samples are sharpened to the final re size requirements. Green boundary analysis specimens, thin film specimens, and semiconductor specimens also grew go through the same process but require a smaller radius of about 250 nanometers or less. Atomic probe tomography is well suited for many applications as it provides spatial location and composition of atoms. Applications of this method began with structural metals and alloys but have expanded to thin multi-layer films and planar substrates, dielectric films, and semiconducting structures and devices. With structural metals and alloys, you can study the different phases and interfaces of these phases as well as grain boundaries and dislocations. This gives great insight to the material properties adding in the development of alloys with enhanced mechanical properties. The properties of devices built from these thin film structures depend on chemical intermixing and the roughness at buried interfaces as well as an even layer thickness. All these parameters can be studied with atom probe tomography. One limitation of atomic probe tomography is specimen preparation. In the past, a needle-shaped specimen was made, but these are difficult for materials like thin films on semiconducting wafers. More recently, there have been a movement towards microtips. These can be used for thin films on substrates, there is low volume required, and parallel processing in large numbers is possible. Mass production and automation of microtips is still in the works. Another limitation of atomic probe tomography is that the specimen fracture is common because of material stresses near the apex of the tip. Laser pulsing can potentially lead to fewer specimen fractures compared to voltage pulsing. Today's atomic probes detect 60% of all energetic ions hitting them. Detection efficiency can be potentially increased by placing a bias mesh in front of the microchannel plates, but this will lead to an increase in background noise. Higher detection efficiency is always better, and improving detection efficiency is an area for the future.